Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the R learning thingy. Anyway, so today we are going to be talking about packages in R. So here's the thing, and here is what is so stinking awesome about R, is R is open source. And so across the world, maybe even across the universe, you never know, there might be aliens programming in R. There are users of R and programmers of R, and R is set up in such a way that if you have a really cool function, a really cool microwave, if you saw my last video, then what you can do is you can export that package to R, or to R's repository, to R's database, or some other place like GitHub, you can export your set of packages online so that users from across the world can download your package and use it to make their analysis of R easy. Because the thing is, is R itself comes with a limited set of functions. They're, they're, I say limited. Um, there's a whole lot of functions in R. So it's really not limited, but it is limited because there are still more functions out there, if that makes any sense. So all the time people are creating new functions in R that they want to give to the public, they want people to be able to access. And so what people like me do, I'm a R package developer, or I'm an R developer as you would call it, and what I have done is I have created several packages in R, and so what it is is I gather all these functions that I create, these microwaves, and I put them into a package that I then upload to R's database. I actually do it to GitHub, but we'll talk about that later. Um, I upload that to R so that anybody from across the world can use the functions that I create to make their analysis so much easier. So you're likely going to come across a situation, well, if you are in my class and you are taking my or watching my videos about statistics, you will need to download at least the Pfeiffer package and probably several others in order to do some sort of analyses that native R does not do or at least in order to do it native R it would require like 100 li lines of code, but I have squished all that information into one function. Does that make sense? So with that, let's go ahead and this time I'm going to do it in R Studio, And we still have that information from before, which we don't need. So I'm not going to save that. I'm just going to delete it. And so I am going to show you how to download a package in R. And we're going to start with a package called DevTools. And you'll see why in a minute. So in order to install that, you can type in the command install.packages, open parentheses, and in quotes, dev tools. And if I highlight that line and then hit command enter, it's going to install the package called dev tools and it's going to give me some information as it's doing that. Now I've already installed dev tools, but it actually doesn't hurt to install it again or to reinstall it. Now as that's installing, I'm going to tell you what dev tools is doing. So DevTools is um, short for developer tools. And so there's a guy named Hadley Wickham who is like a big name in the R developer community. And what he's done is he's created a set of tools that make it easier for people like me to develop packages and post them to R. Um, and we're going to use that package because that package will allow us to install the Pfeiffer package. Make sense? So aside from installing the Pfeiffer package, you probably don't need the DevTools package, but back to R. So now what we have done is we have installed the DevTool packages in R, and now it is loaded somewhere on our computer. But what R doesn't know is that you want to load the package. So just because the package is somewhere on your hard drive, doesn't mean that R knows that it should now be looking for the information in that package, if that makes sense. And so, for example, there is a command in DevTools called install underscore GitHub, which is the one that we're going to do. And if I just ran that, it wouldn't know that that function exists until I type in require DevTools. So that little function right there tells R, all right, look for the package called DevTools in the directory that you installed it in, and then load that package so I can use their functions. And then now once I've done that, I can use the install underscore GitHub function. 
And so now I promised you I would talk about GitHub versus R. So R um, has a database or a repository, as we call it, that stores all the packages that users submit to R that people can download. Now, it used to be that Pfeiffer was on R, but long story short, R um, changed some of the rules with how functions work, and then with their change, Pfeiffer stopped working, and they said, hey, you need to fix this problem ASAP, and I said, I don't have time to fix that problem. I'm right in the middle of a semester, and they said, well, we need it fixed, and I said, hey, by the way, I, I do not have any conflicts at all with R. I don't want to come across that way. I basically said to R, I said, hey guys, um, I appreciate you letting me know about this. Um, I can't fix it right now. Life is super busy. I'll get to fixing it eventually. It's on GitHub. People can get it on GitHub. Just go ahead and remove Pfeiffer from CRAN. So that's what happened. Um, and so what a lot of package developers like me are doing is every six months, they update the package on CRAN, which is R's database, and they maintain a working copy on GitHub. And GitHub is basically a place where coders like me put their packages online so anybody can use them. And it's a whole lot more than that. It's actually, GitHub is really amazing. But basically, every time I make a change to R locally on my computer, I almost always automatically upload it to GitHub. So if you d install from GitHub, you're getting the most recent version of Pfeiffer and likewise for a lot of other package developers. And so DevTools, back to what we were talking about earlier, DevTools allows or is a way that makes it easy to install a package that is located on GitHub. So now to install the Pfeiffer function, what we're going to do is type in the install underscore GitHub function and then in quotes you're going to put the location of where my Pfeiffer package is which is Dustin Fife forward slash Pfeiffer and then if I run that little line of code it is going to run now and what the heck let me see what this is saying okay these packages have more recent versions available would you like to update Okay, so long story short, uh, Pfeiffer requires, so when I created my package, there are certain functions that I created that require other functions from other packages. So that's all that that's asking is, okay, these functions that are required, do you want to add them? And it doesn't tell me, enter one or more numbers, separated device spaces. Oh, I see. So I'm going to type in 33, which is all of them. And this may take a minute. And so it's going to download all those packages that Pfeiffer is requiring right now. And while that's downloading, I'm actually going to show you in the other version of R um, how to do that. So going back to this file, I'm going to go install underscore GitHub, and I've already required dev tools in here, Dustin Fife forward slash Pfeiffer. And oh, that's right. So basically this uh, R already has the most recent version of Pfeiffer. So it's basically saying, hey, you already have the most recent version. Nothing's changed, dude. Now, here's a problem that might come across. You might get a message like this. So you might get something that says error in load namespace, blah, 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 blah. There is no package called mice. And I have looked into this problem. Um, and it's, I think what's happening is uh, each of these packages, it looks like mice, tidyverse, calplot, and ls means there is some sort of dependency in there that they haven't, it, okay, I don't want to blame them but somebody along the way did not write their R code properly. Um, I don't think it's me because I'm looking at my code and it looks like it's right. But anyway, somewhere, somebody is not writing their code properly. And so that just requires an extra step on your part. So if you get a pack or an error that says something like this, there is no package called blah, then all you have to do, then do, so for example, in this case, mice, all you have to do is go under here and go install.packages mice. And then, oh, and that's another thing that'll happen if you're in R, if you're installing a package, it might 
ask you select a mirror basically it's asking where do you want to download this from and I almost always default to zero cloud I think what that does is it automatically finds whatever location is closest to you so anyway I am now downloading mice and and then I might try to install Git or Pfeiffer again and then it might give me another error saying tidyverse isn't installed and then you go and install dot packages tidyverse etc 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 and then eventually fingers crossed Pfeiffer will install wish it didn't have that problem but for some reason it does so in summary um the R community is very, very active. There are developers, thousands of developers across the world who are very invested in R and invested in their tools being used by other people. And so what they do is they create packages that they can load online that allow other users like you to download those packages. And so throughout my statistical training, I'm going to show you how to use the Pfeiffer package and I invite you to install it and use it. See you next time.